Welcome again to the Christ Ecclesia Institute. We're going through the uh, book entitled One Truth. We're now on chapter two, What Is and Is Not Truth? And I think that this is really gonna be helpful, Henry. Again, I'm Doug Krieger uh, with uh, Henry Hahn here. And uh, we're gonna be discussing what is and is not truth. This is extremely important. We're gonna be beginning uh, right on this topic that the truth is contained in Scripture. How to access it is a biggie. Right. So where do we start here, Henry? Right. Well, you know, last, uh, last video you pointed out John chapter 5, mm -hmm. verse 39 and 34, where, where uh, the Pharisees and the scribes, they were searching the Scriptures, and Jesus said, you search the Scriptures, but you don't come to me uh, that you might have life. And uh, so... Uh, just ampl amplifying on that, in Luke uh, chapter uh, 24, you know, there were the two brothers that were backsliding to Emmaus mm -hmm. after Jesus died, and they didn't know that he resurrected yet. And then Jesus came alongside, and they didn't know it was Jesus, so they started talking to Jesus, and Jesus started asking questions. And, and, uh, but eventually, uh, Jesus started to open up the scriptures to them, and this is, what, this is so, so precious here. It says, uh, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. So that's pretty much the entire, what we consider to be this, the Hebrew scriptures. The Hebrew scriptures has these three parts, the, the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. And, he's, and, and Jesus is concerning me, okay? What is important in, those, in the Hebrew scriptures is concerning me. And if you don't have the understanding to see me mm -hmm. in those scriptures, then you do not understand the scriptures. You have mm -hmm. not comprehended the scriptures. So, you, you know, we can get a lot of things from scriptures, obviously law and ethics and morality and and, and uh, history and stories, but if you did not see Jesus, if you do not see Jesus, then you have not yet comprehended the scriptures. Yes. And, uh, and this, is, uh, this is a really important thing because there's so many arguments over the interpretation of scriptures, but really there aren't that much, there are not hardly any arguments today concerning the person and work of Jesus Christ. And, uh, mm -hmm. and that's what Jesus said, you have to come, you know, mm -hmm. to me when you read the scriptures. So he's the logos. Mm -hmm. The logos is the word. The word is embedded in the scriptures. And the word is what declares God. The, the word declares God. So mm -hmm. the word is the truth. Mm -hmm. But there's a reality lying at the very basis of the appearance and manifestation of this truth. There's a reality within the truth, right? Yeah, well, actually, that is our, the, the meaning of truth. If you go to the Greek word mm -hmm. aletheia, if you, you know, look at the definition, mm -hmm. is the reality, truth is reality lying at the basis of appearance and manifestation. In other words, whatever we see around us, if you can see it, it's manifested, well, there is a reality behind that. And that okay. reality is truth. Okay, so Hebrews says, you know, the, the whole world is framed mm -hmm. by the word of God. You know, is what, is, what you see is not what it appears because the whole world is framed by the word of God. That is the reality. That is the logos. So a lot of the argument today mm -hmm. over uh, Christian practices and what does it look like is really exactly what does it look like is appearance appearances and manifestation, arguing about how to get baptized, what, is, what should the communion look like. Those are all appearances. And, uh, but there's a reality behind right, all of that. Right. And that is the truth. If you have to get, be, get to the reality of what is seen, so don't argue over the manifestation or the appearances, but get to the truth, get to the reality of that thing. Mm. And the reality is God and His eternal work. So let's talk about the reality beginning with God. Right. So the very first reality is God. Right. So God, he is, the, he is in the beginning. And mm -hmm. God, as the Word, He became flesh. And 
full of grace and truth. So God is full of truth. God in the Word is full of truth. And the Son of God, who mm -hmm. became flesh, right? He says, I am the truth. And, uh, and the truth is in Jesus. He right. even says the truth is in Jesus. So that's where the truth is, in Jesus. And the Spirit is the truth. So he's called the Spirit of truth. And it's mm -hmm. the Spirit that guides us into all truth. Mm -hmm. So without the Spirit, all we're dealing with is mm -hmm. the appearance and the manifestation. But we got to get to the truth, right? Yeah, and, and it's interesting. In John, it says that he dwelt among us, right? And, and that word dwelt has to do with he tabernacled. Now, mm -hmm. when you tabernacle among us, that means like you have this tent or booth. <laughs> Yeah. And you're there to fellowship among us. So it's, in other words, it's not this objective truth per se, mm -hmm. but it's a truth that wants to interact with you and me. He wants to tabernacle among us. He wants to be there. It's the reality beyond just the objective truth that's there. Amen. You know, he wants to tabernacle. He came to tabernacle with us. Amen. It's wonderful. That's right. And uh, so, so th that's the Trinity, right? The Trinity mm -hmm. is truth. I think we can all agree with that. And uh, now, what he accomplished, what Jesus accomplished mm -hmm. in his death, his, not just his death, incarnation, mm -hmm. death, resurrection, ascension, as a man, God in the flesh, all of that work he mm -hmm. accomplished is also truth. So it's the gospel. When you hear the gospel, his death, his resurrection, that is the gospel of the word of truth, okay? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so even the new man, what he created, the new man, the ecclesia, right? The body of Christ, that is part of the truth. That is because yes. that's part of him. He is the truth, and the ecclesia, his body, is the extension of who he is. Mm. And so the, the Bible, the scriptures, convey the truth. So Daniel says is the scriptures of truth. Right. The truth owns the scripture. So if you read the scriptures without seeing the truth, then all you got is black and white words. You yeah. did not get the scriptures of truth. Right, of truth, okay? <laughs> so, and uh, lastly, truth is eternal. Mm -hmm. If you see Second uh, John there, uh, it says it's the eternal truth. Mm -hmm. Truth is eternal. So, you know, it's a, actually, it's an easy question. If you're arguing over something, dividing over something, is it eternal? Does it matter in eternity? If it doesn't matter in eternity, then it's not truth worth arguing over. Now, that's where Pontius Pilate was. He was arguing about what is truth. Yeah. And it was arbitrary. So a lot of people look at truth today, Henry, as you know, in a very arbitrary fashion. They don't see it as absolute and eternal. It could be truth today, tomorrow, right. it's a little bit different. All kinds of truth out there, right? That's and, right. And, and, but it's not the truth, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's not the truth. So even like I mentioned earlier, right, the ma matter of the elements, the, you know, the communion, does, does it matter if it's uh, grape juice or wine? Mm -hmm. Well. Does it matter in eternity? Is grape juice or wine? Is this a matter if the bread is leaven or not leaven? Well, does it matter in eternity? <laughs> Are we going to argue over this in eternity? The answer is no, right? The answer is <laughs> that's not going to matter eternity. Why? Because in eternity, what is what was really truth is that we're eating and drinking mm -hmm. of Jesus for mm -hmm. eternity. The water yes. of life is there. The tree of life is there. We're eating and drinking him, which is the truth behind communion. Mm -hmm. So let's not argue over the appearance, but stick to the reality, the truth. Now, most Christians <laughs> divide uh, division is not really over the truth. They're dividing over what things here? Henry? Oh, all sorts of things today, right? Not. <laughs> You know, oh, we would never divide over politics. <laughs> no, oh, today is this terrible. How, how politics divide Christians, uh, social issues, uh, you know, uh, science, right? Is it yeah. creation mm -hmm. or evolution? I mean, well, does it matter in eternity? Which, you mm -hmm. know, all these things, right? So, um, you know, in addition, you have all the doctrinal things. So mm -hmm. all these things and, they, and everybody cites scriptures. You know, let, let's give you an idea, right? Let's say the uh, homeless situation, mm -hmm. big 
issue in, in the U.S., especially in California. Well, some people will cite, well, you got to give to the poor. Well, obviously, mm -hmm. they're poor. you got to give to them. And mm -hmm. there's clear verses to show that. Oh, yeah. Oh, then you have the other verse that, well, if they don't, if you don't, uh, if, if they don't work, they mm -hmm. shouldn't eat. Yeah. Well, there's a clear verse for that. So now you have this two division, right, citing the Bible. <laughs> so one side could say, hey, look, they're not working, so why should I feed them? Why should I give them yeah. anything? Other side says, well, give to the poor. So here you have fighting uh, over something from Scripture, but neither of them is truth. Well, are, they gonna, are there going to be poor people in eternity? The answer is no, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, if the Lord touch you to, to share with the poor, amen. That's if right. the Lord touch you not to share mm -hmm. with this particular poor, well, amen to that too, sure. right? Because that is what God is touching you based on his word at that moment. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> Every division will cite scripture. That's a fact, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> and Satan knows how to use the scripture to oh, cause yeah. division. He, that's how he tempted Jesus with all these uh, biblical passages yeah. and twisting the scriptures. Yes, yes. And even the Bible itself is mm -hmm. a big divider. Oh, yeah. The Bible is every single word in the Bible, the word of God. I mean, that's a divider. But let's ask, is, is, now, when we say the Bible, we mean the book, right? The book, the, the book Bible, books, the scriptures, right. right? The book of books, right? We Obviously, the Bible, the scriptures convey the logos. We already established that. But now, on the other hand, if it's mm -hmm. the book itself, now, do we have to divide over whether every single word... Listen, I mean, was there, was mm. there the Bible when, uh, let's, when, G, uh, when the, uh, be, you know, the Bible came, New Testament came about, what, when, what, about 300 oh, to yeah. 300, Fi right? Fi the final canonization actually was way into the 300s. Yeah. So what about all, yeah. the, uh, all the believers be, before then that did not have the New Testament? Did yeah. they get saved? Mm -hmm. Did they believe in Jesus' death and resurrection? Of right. course they did right? So certainly they got saved without the Bible, so to speak. And what about the Gentile uh, believers? Did they read the Hebrew scriptures? No. Obviously they didn't read the Hebrew yeah. scriptures. Did they get saved through the preaching of Jesus Christ? Yes. So Jesus, let's stick to what is important, right? So I'm not saying the Bible is not important. I read the Bible and I'm using the Bible certainly as the, as the basis of all our uh, fellowship and teachings, yes. but still, mm -hmm. we should not divide over the Bible itself, but we need to stick to the truth, which is conveyed by the Bible. Yes, you know, it's amazing because when John wrote the book of Revelation, he was exiled to the isle called Patmos for two things, the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Good point. Think about it. <laughs> the Word of God at that time was fundamentally, basically, the Hebrew Scriptures. Right. And there he was. As far as the New Testament, he was writing it. <laughs> yes. Right. And so, and you know, they had the letters of Paul and others, but, but in the main, uh, he was there for the Word of God. And, and, and you'd have to say, when you read the book of Revelation, it's, it's filled with Hebrew scriptures. I mean, from start to finish. I mean, but, it's just Yeah, filled. but even the script, Hebrew scriptures, Paul mm -hmm. says, the letter kills. Yeah. Right? Then you have this matter. So the point is, anybody can cite verses to show, mm -hmm. you know, their point of view. But at the same time, let's stick to the truth. Let's understand what the truth is. And yes, let's get it from scriptures, okay? Yeah. Let's get let's the truth from scriptures. Yeah. He, you know, when he was on the road to Emmaus, That's right. he, they were comprehending it. Oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> yes, let's comprehend the scriptures. Let's get to the truth and yes. comprehend the scriptures. Absolutely. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, and, uh, and this point, uh, this slide, we want to, just show how easily it is mm. to be distracted away from truth. Okay, how mm. easily. Now, remember, the story here is that this is just about a week after, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus asked mm -hmm. Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter, you know, just declared, mm -hmm. you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And yeah. Jesus says, what a revelation. You got this from the Father. No one told you this. This was a direct revelation from the Father. And then mm -hmm. a week later, right? And there were this, uh, the tr Jesus was there. And mm -hmm. then there was, uh, there was uh, Moses appeared and Elijah appeared. So three, Jesus, Peter, uh, Jesus, Moses, uh, and Elijah appeared to Peter, John, and James. 
And Peter again declared, he said, oh man, it's so good to be here. Let's make three tabernacles, three booths, one for each one. So immediately he already forgot. He forgot. He got distracted by Moses, which is the, you know, the, the greatest law. writer, right, yeah. of the Old Testament, or the Hebrew Scripture, the law, which is the paramount in the eyes of the Jews. And, uh, and then you have the, uh, uh, Elijah, mm -hmm. the prophet, the greatest prophet doing all sorts of miracles. And so today, Christians can be, you know, oh, yes, I believe in Jesus. Now, tell me what to do. Tell me how I to live. Right. Tell me what, what are the laws of the Christian uh, of, of, of being a Christian? Mm -hmm. Immediately, that's the gravitation, right? And the other side is, okay, I need more miracles. Show me the miracles, yeah. right? Yeah. I need God to do some, show something. Show me the power. Show me the power, right? Yeah. God needs to show, do something miraculous in my life. Yes, I believe Jesus died and resurrected. Okay, I got my ticket, but now I, I need, uh, I need, I need some miracles, yeah. yes, in, in my life, right? <laughs> some signs so, and wonders. So immediately, we're distracted from the truth. So we need another revelation. The Father from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son. Hear Him. That's it. Yes. Hear him. Yes. Forget Moses. Forget Elijah. Hear him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think? Well, God. Peter got the revelation concerning Jesus big time a week later. He said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. One week later, he's setting up three tents. Yeah. Well, you know? <laughs> I was, hey, this is, let's keep it even. I'll even mention your name first, Jesus. I'll do one up. And then Moses is kind of like number two, and this is number three. Yeah. But uh, obviously, uh, he's probably thinking, of course, we don't know for sure, but he was probably thinking of putting Jesus' tent in the middle. That would have been really cool because sure. you know they're, they're all the, it, it's all you know his his natural mind. He still didn't see who he was. No, even though he saw. <laughs> see, yeah. that's the situation with so many of us Christians, right? We yeah. saw Jesus. We got a revelation, but immediately we just put him in the equal plane with the law and, and the with the prophets. Okay, yeah. he at least <laughs> is keeping good company. <laughs> Well, we don't need good company. We just need, we just we just need, need Jesus. To hear him, hear right? him. That's right. And yeah. uh, so now I want to get into two words in the Greek relating to doctrine. I think it's really applicable and, and, and in, in this understanding because this matter of doctrine has been so divisive. The, mm -hmm. Even the understanding of doctrine. Because, you know, like we mentioned last video, says some people, some Christians says, we don't need doctrines. We just need the spirit. Yeah. Right. Uh, then other side to say, no, we need more doctrine. If you have more doctrine, then you'll be clear and you don't need the spirit so much. Right? Well, Can the just... doctrines just divide. So we just need the spirit. Right. We just need the spirit. <laughs> and so, well, those that are, have the spirit supposedly are also divisive. So, you know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and uh, so, so let's understand these two, these two Greek words because it's really uh, helpful. Uh, the first Greek word, now, they're, both, Greeks word, both Greek words are mm -hmm. translated to doctrine or teaching. Mm -hmm. So in the, in the uh, English Bible, it's either doctrine or teaching. There are two Greek words, and one is didache, and the other is didaskelia. Okay, so those two words. Now, the first word, uh, didache, mm -hmm. is established. It means established, reliable, mm -hmm. time-honored. That means it's the same. From age to age, that doctrine is the same. Okay, so positively, when it, when it comes to the, uh, it, when it's used the word, the doctrine of Jesus Christ is used didache, because the teaching of Jesus Christ, who he is, what he has accomplished, that is didache. So it's the same doctrine or didache that the apostles use. So it's the, when this is the doctrines of the apostle, it's the didache of the apostles. Because what they preached, their message is Jesus Christ is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and their work. Okay? Mm -hmm. That is, from age to age, is time-honored and reliable mm -hmm. and established. And we shouldn't deviate from that at all. And, 
and that we should teach that. They That's right. That's, That's right. That's established, right? Right. Now there is a negative side of didache if you read the search the scripture, mm -hmm. and and they're also time honored, and they're also right reliable, negatively reliable. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, doctrines of the Pharisees, the doctrine of Balaam, the doctrine mm -hmm. of Nicolaitans, and the doctrine of Jezebel. Mm -hmm. All of those doctrines is universally negative. Okay, mm -hmm. no time should we should we applied any of those. We should reject mm -hmm. right these yeah, negative right. didache. So it's either it's either uh, uh, extreme one way or another, but it's not anywhere in the middle. It's right. either all this or all that. It's but all it's, positive. It's, Jesus yeah. Christ and the apostles. Mm -hmm. are or all it's negative. all negative. Right. You know, it's either one or the other. Right. Now, on the other hand, didaskalia is applying how to apply scriptures. That's the, mm -hmm. so the meaning, uh, you know, you can get this meaning from BibleHub.com, okay, is that it's applied teaching specifically to influence lifestyle. Okay, so now it can be applied, applied positively. So that's why uh, that mm -hmm. it says that all scriptures is profitable for didaskalia, okay, for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof, for correction in righteousness. So we can apply scriptures mm -hmm. in a positive way to help believers, okay, so to provide uh, patience, comfort, and hope, and, uh, and so it should be healthy, okay, it should be healthy. So how do you apply scriptures positively, right? So, um, mm. so let's say, you know, um, someone is uh, really mm -hmm. uh, uh, sad that uh, mm. they feel like they may, they, the Lord Jesus, the, the God left him. God left him, right? right. And, uh, and he just messed up. He fell and he even denied the Lord to his friends. And, uh, and he just felt like he's done with Jesus. And so someone would read a verse and say, well, look at it. It says that uh, John 10, it says, no one can pluck you out of the Father's hand, mm -hmm. you know, that, that uh, God's calling is irrevocable. So don't worry, you're still with the Lord. The Lord is still loves you. The Lord's still with you. So he's applying scripture to comfort him, to give him hope. Mm -hmm. You see, that is application of scripture. Now, and on the other hand, someone could say, well, you know, uh, you know, I know I'm saved, so I, I can go drinking, get drunk, and, mm. you know, and, and be promiscuous. doesn't matter because, you know, I, I'm mm -hmm. saved, you see. Mm -hmm. So then he needs another scripture to apply to him mm -hmm. to say, well, you better read Philippians chapter 2. It <laughs> says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. Don't just think that it's all done for you. No, there could, you need some fear and trembling there. So that scripture at that point could really help to be healthy for this person because it turned him to the Lord. He said, oh, Lord Jesus, forgive me, Lord. Lord, now I realize it's not a small thing to be saved. I don't want to mm. take your grace cheaply, Amen. and uh, I just want to repent and, and follow you wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. See, so that was healthy for that person at that time. <laughs> so, Doug, you, you see the, how you applied yeah. Scripture healthily, mm -hmm. positively? That's right. I mean, you can also... Uh, with those very passages, beat somebody over the head at the same time. <laughs> in other words, apply them in a healthful manner. You know, in other words, when a guy is not doing well, uh, you know, he, he may need those scriptures that you've alluded to mm -hmm. that, hey, you know, no man shall pluck down my mother out of my father's hand and give him that assurance. Yeah. At the same time, you don't want him just going out, off living uh, fast and loose for the devil. So you might have to hit him up and say, hey, brother, you better start working out your own salvation with a little bit of fear, fear. and trembling. A lot of fear you know? and trembling. Because if you don't <laughs> suffer with him, you're not going to reign with him. That's now, what right. does that mean? Well, it doesn't sound good. Okay, That's right. So, That's so, right. But you got to apply it with the intent that it's in the Word of God, but you want to bring them to the Lord in a healthy way. You know, Amen. part of that uh, meaning of didaskalia, mm -hmm. if you look it up, is systematize teaching. Mm. Systematize. 
So what we've done is we've used these, you know, we have used the application and systematize the doctrine around it. Yeah. And that's where you get the fighting of eternal salvation using the verses that I just quoted, mm -hmm. right? And those that you can lose your salvation, again, using the verse that I just quoted. So instead of using, applying the verses healthily for encouragement, for hope, for teaching, and for reproof, we use it to fight and to beat each other over the head with our systematized theology. Yeah. So didaske is, uh, in a sense, there's no flexibility there. But here with didaskalia, there is a little more flexibility. Is that what we're saying here to some extent, Henry? Yeah, because, mm -hmm. because in the Bible, there, there are always, you, you, know, you could read anything and get two sides. So let's, cut, let's mm -hmm. look at this um, in, in, in Matthew 15, mm -hmm. right? So there were the Pharisees. They were teaching, mm -hmm. they were telling people, look, the money that you're going to give to your parents, mm -hmm. okay, just give to the temple. Okay, if you give to the temple, then that's good. That's good enough. Just tell your parents, what I was going to give you, I gave to the temple, I gave to God, and they should be happy because that means you honor God more than them. See, so that's Jesus what the Pharisees said, that's what saying. the Pharisees said. Yeah. So, but Jesus said, no, that is the didascalia of men. You are ah. applying the scriptures wrongly, negatively, because you have applied, yes, giving to God to the temple. Certainly that's scripture. But so is honoring your parents, honoring your father and mother. Yes. That's also, also scripture. Mm -hmm. So if you focus on one, up, uplift one, and negate the other, that becomes the didascalia of men. Mm. Okay? Yes. So yes. that now is now negative. And so that's why in Ephesians chapter 4, it says, don't get blown by every wind of didascalia, right? Because you're being blown. If you're a babe, spiritual babe, you're going to get a wind this mm -hmm. way, a wind that way. And those are how to apply scriptures. Okay, oh, yeah. you need to speak in tongues. If you don't speak in tongues, you might not even be saved. In fact, I don't think you're saved unless you speak in tongues. Well, for sure you don't have the baptism. For sure, right? Yeah, but for see, sure. that could be a win. See, that's <laughs> applying scripture in a way to blow you to a certain direction. Then the other direction comes and say, what? No, speaking in tongues, is that a real language? Is that a dialect? Can anybody on this whole earth understand any of that? No, I think that's demonic, right? <laughs> when you speak in tongues, that's demonic. Yeah. So that's another win. Yeah. Okay, and these wins are caused by men. Many times, Christian men, mm -hmm. whether good will or bad will, they would use their cunning to, you know, apply scriptures in a way to blow believers mm. into a kind of their thing. Their yeah. agenda, the commandments, their system. Yeah, the commandments of men. You know, in Ephesians chapter 2, it's very interesting, Henry. It says that he nailed to the cross, okay, the mm. law of commandments yeah. contained mm. in ordinances. Yeah. And the word ordinances there is dogma. Yeah. And I think it must have something to do with the commandments of men. In other words, we take the, the, the teaching and we make it a commandment of men and when it goes to that extent, it becomes uh, uh, enmity, it becomes a hatred, becomes yeah. a divisive thing, in this case, between Jew and Gentile. <clears throat> and so here we have the commandments of men uh, teaching doctrines as the commandments of men rather than coming to him and worshiping him. What, yeah. a, what a distinction. Yeah, so, but the key there, though, is that they, they, they suppress the other one. They yeah. suppress the side that would, you know, would cause a problem mm -hmm. for the side that they are yeah. up, lifting up, right? Right. And that's the case with the ordinances, the dogma. Yeah. And it's focusing mm -hmm. on one side or negating the other side. Right. It's just right. uh, picking sides. And so yeah. even the doctrine of demons is really interesting. You know, when it comes to the doctrine of demons, you would mm -hmm. think, oh, that means they're teaching fornication. They're teaching mm -hmm. people to get drunk. They're, they're mm -hmm. teaching, you know, uh, uh, worship idols and... Uh, and mm -hmm. so forth. And so, no, but if you read, it says, mm. uh, you know, the doctrine of demons, the didascalia of mm -hmm. demons is forbidding to marriage yeah, yeah. and uh, don't eat meat. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, you know, it doesn't sound like, in fact, it sounds kind of holy, you know. Well, didn't Paul say that uh, yeah. it's better not to marry? Yeah. Well, Paul said that. 
Paul says, if I'm not married, then I can be fully for God. Right? I have no distraction. Right. Well, so now you, you take that to an extreme and you forbid to marry based on something that there is you positive. Go. There you okay? go. And uh, now it becomes a doctrine of demons, didascalia. Okay. <laughs> well, isn't it good? Doesn't the Bible teach us to, uh, to fast, to not to eat, and especially the things to idle? You know, that's dirty, that's common. Well, see, that's something about that as well. So now the doctrine of demons is, don't eat. don't eat. Don't eat any meat at all. Yeah. Okay. So the thing is that the didascalia is this trying to influence people's lifestyle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Inf influence people, mm -hmm. you know, how they dress, how yeah. they eat, you know, uh, their pastime, their entertainment. Mm -hmm. And using the Bible as a kind of a win to blow believers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, so we need to keep the unity in the truth. Ah. That's, what the, that's what we need to do, right? Let's not get blown about, you know, let's use the scriptures wisely to reprove, to, you know, to encourage for hope, uh, for healthy, to bring people to Jesus. Mm -hmm. but, uh, let's, but let's stay in the truth. Let's, let's keep the unity in the truth. And that is so clearly laid out in Ephesians chapter 4. Mm -hmm. You know, Ephesians chapter 4 ba basically just laid out all the key points of the truth. What is that? First, right? Foremost, one body, which mm -hmm. is this ec ecclesia. There's only one body That's because it. there's only one spirit. That's right. Right. One body, one spirit. That is truth. Uh, one hope. Well, all of us are Christ in us is the hope of glory. That's the only hope we have. Yes. You know, our hope is not really pre-tribulation uh, rapture or post-tribulation mm -hmm. rapture. That's not our hope. Our hope is Christ in us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, and, uh, and one Lord. So it doesn't matter if you're a Jew, a Jewish believer, a Gentile believer, a Chinese believer, German believer, right? A Nigerian believer, we all have one Lord. We yes. call him the same Lord. Mm -hmm. And one faith, we all have a common faith, right? That Jesus, you know, he is God, he died for us, he resurrected, and he's now the Lord, and he's indwelling us. Yes. And one baptism. Mm -hmm. You know, there are many ways to baptize, but really there's only one baptism is through faith, is through faith mm. that we have believed into Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, right? Yes. It's through faith that we're now in him and the old man is passed away. Amen. And so finally, there's only one God and Father of, us of all. all of us. Yes. All believers with the faith in Jesus Christ were born of God and we have the same Father. I really like the way that uh, Paul prioritized the unity of the Spirit uh, in the bond of peace. His first thing is, there's one body. Let's start off, folks. Yeah. There's one <clears throat> ecclesia yeah. that he's after, and we're all in it. Amen. There is one body. Now, from that, we can go out. <laughs> yeah, the Spirit, the Father, the yeah. Son. It's Amen. great, isn't it? Amen. And it's only one all the way through, right? Amen. One hope, and it's, it's, it's great. Uh, one Lord uh, and for, for all of us. <laughs> one faith, one baptism. I mean, how can you argue, argue over one? Because <laughs> you don't have two to argue over. You just have one, and all these ones are there, right? Yeah. It's uh, pretty amazing. Seven ones. Seven ones. And, and, and I, I mean... I didn't ask every Christian in the world, but I venture to say every genuine believer, no matter which continent they're in, would agree with these seven mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. They would agree that there's only one body and there's only one spirit that we all drink from, right? There's only one hope, one mm -hmm. Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one, one God, God and, and Father, Father of all. Himself. You see, but yet there's so many divisions and arguments and fighting over how to apply mainly is the didascalia. The application of scripture is, you know, what does it look like? The yep. appearance, the manifestation. Mm -hmm. But let's stick to the truth, saints, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then we will arrive at unity and maturity. So what's the definition of maturity and real unity? Yeah. So unity is maturity, right, Henry? Amen. Amen. So it, where, takes where it takes maturity to be in unity. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so in the same chapter where Paul started with, you know, keep the unity of the spirit, mm -hmm. then eventually he says arriving 
or attaining to the unity of the faith and the and to the knowledge of the Son of God mm -hmm. to mature maturity or mature manhood, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so this matter is that you know maturity is related to unity of the faith. Yes. Uh, when 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 uh, Paul wrote to the Corinthians, they were all divided over their preference of ministers. Paul says, "You're babes, right? I cannot." talk to you as spirituals because you're babes. So here, now that they could come together in unity, then they are mature. Yes. And the unity is of the faith. Is mm. The unity is not of how we applied scriptures because mm -hmm. applying scriptures to different people can at different time, right? Different mm -hmm. situations yeah. may need different scriptures to apply to them healthily. Yeah. Okay. But the uh, unity, the faith that we have, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, it's, it goes to eternity. Mm. All right? It's the same uh, throughout the whole world. We speak the same faith to each other. And the knowledge of the Son of God, right? The unsearchable mm. riches of Christ. Mm. That is didascalia. That is the truth is so rich. That's why mm -hmm. we have a whole book just to... Uh, it's not even all the truth. It's just giving you a framework. Yeah. If you read this book, it gives you a framework of the key points of the truth so that you would appreciate. You go, wow, the truth is so rich. Mm -hmm. When you go through this book chapter by chapter, you just, you just fall in love with Jesus all over again. You would praise God mm -hmm. because he's so rich and he's provided so much for us to enjoy of himself and all that he's done. Amen. Amen. So we have this, this, this wonderful uh, unity of the faith. It is common to all believers. And it's so simple. <laughs> we like to complicate everything. You know, complicate the relationship. You know, and you, you ask somebody some questions. Well, what do you think about so-and-so? And, -so? and they, they pause for a while and they say, well, it's complicated. <laughs> well, this is not complicated. No, it is not. The, the, we like to uh, systematize right? We like to complicate things, right? But it's very simple. Just hear ye him, right? Hear him. Just look for Jesus yes. and Amen. the unsearchable riches of Christ. Yes. When you get into the mm -hmm. unsearchable riches of Christ, uh, you can see him. Once you start to see him throughout the Bible, even in the Hebrew scriptures, starting from Genesis, mm. you can read Genesis and you will see the riches of Christ there unveiled. Amen. Right? E even something simple as, you know, the third on the third day the land appeared. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that so simple. Well, you know, the land is Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, remember the good land? We had, yeah. a, you know, we have a, a discussion concerning the good land. Well, that's Jesus. That came up on the third day. Yeah. That is the day of resurrection. Yeah, there you go. Right? On the third day, the day of resurrection. The day of resurrection. Right, so right. even that little little window there you could say oh praise god hallelujah for the land that we're on yeah for the third day for amen. the third day yeah so life we, out of death amen so we need to look for christ in all mm -hmm. of the scriptures and and you know that was paul mm -hmm. paul you know he mm -hmm. uh, in in philippians he says you know i've i've accomplished so much in my religion in the judaism right judaism, in the religion yeah. mm -hmm. of judaism uh I was uh, I was foremost. I was a Pharisee. I was mm -hmm. I was persecuting the uh, the believers, the Christians mm -hmm. for God. I was taught under Gamaliel. I uh, mean, yeah. one of the great rabbis of the day. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. And so he said, but I count all this is nothing. It's garbage for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Amen. Right. Ooh, he yeah. just you know he studied the law. But eventually, he says, that's nothing if I don't see Jesus. I want to get the knowledge, the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. And then he continued to say, you know, forgetting the things that are behind and pursuing, right? Always pursuing toward the mm -hmm. prize. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, and then he goes, he goes, if you are any otherwise minded, God will show it to you yes. because this is the mature mind. Mm, yes. A mind of maturity is one that would keep forgetting no matter whatever we have attained. We're still pursuing 
the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, right? And we're doing uh, that mm. all for the unity of his body. Yes. That's the, that's the whole thing here. You know, a lot of times uh, uh, I see a brother or a sister and I say, you know, and I, and I use this in, in a guarded way. I'm going to say, well, you know, it seems like brother so-and-so has really grown in the Lord. What is the manifestation of that growth, Henry? If it isn't yeah. the unity of the body of Christ growing up into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ is his body. I mean, is he <clears throat> one with the brothers and sisters in a way of reality and in a way of love? Amen. Is his burden, is his passion for God's people? If that's the, sign, the great sign of maturity in a believer's life. Is, is not how, quote, spiritual they are, yeah. but it's measured by the fullness of Christ. Amen. And that, that really uh, <laughs> kind of uh, puts a new twist on what is a mature, mature Christian. Version. Right. right? That, that's and, a huge point because we have, you mm -hmm. know, how do we measure maturity? That's a great point. Mm -hmm. and, and according to these verses, right, mm -hmm. we pointed out, it measured by unity yes. and by whether you are able to forget other things, and just pursue Christ, yeah. right? And, uh, and this is truth, you know. I, I want to point out that even after this is where he says, come to maturity, mm -hmm. come to unity and maturity. And, so, and don't be a babe, which we quoted earlier. Yeah. Don't be a babe to get tossed by this didaskalia, right? Mm -hmm. being tossed around by, by these winds of teaching. But now speaking the truth, the holding on to truth in love. So the truth is very much part of this whole equation. That's why this verse I point out, because arriving at the unity, he starts off with, uh, you know, in chap beginning of chapter 4, the seven ones that we all agree with, and then, then he continues to arriving at this unity, attaining to this unity of yes. the faith, and then the, the answer, the way to keep going in this trajectory is to speak the truth in love, to hold on to truth, or truthing it in love, yes. right? Staying with the truth in love so that we may grow up into all things. And you were talking about maturity, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Doug, is yeah. that, you know, is, is truthing it, truthing it in love, right? Staying with truth. Mm -hmm. That's how you would grow up into Christ in all things in the body of Christ. Well, this has been a great uh, <laughs> chapter, uh, Henry, on what is truth and what is not truth. I think we're getting a new perspective here that's very healthy and that the Lord will sustain us in this reality of who He is and what He's really after today. Amen. So uh, what is and is not truth, chapter two is now completed and we're gonna go on to chapter three in one truth. Again, this is uh, Doug Krieger and with Henry Hahn for the Christ Ecclesia Institute.